Okay, guys, so every time that I do a problem like this, I'm going to do 80. We're still looking at, at coefficient, coefficient of friction. Please try it yourself first and then see how I do the solution. Okay? That, that is the best way for you to learn, is try something, try it again and again, and you begin to understand what you understand and understand what you don't understand. Okay, so this says you want to walk down your icy driveway without sliding. If the incline of the driveway is 15 degrees from the horizontal, what must the coefficient of static friction be between your shoes and the ice? So here we have your incline. Okay, I know this is not to scale. Uh, I mean, I know that's more like 45 degrees than 15, but it just imagine that's 15 degrees. And here you are trying to walk down without sliding. Okay? So, so what are we going to do? Well, let's draw a free body diagram of this guy. We know that there is F, G, and then we know that because he's not accelerating, um, that uh, we have friction. And the maximum friction force is this. So this will be your F contact force. Now, if you break it up into its components, as we always do, we will see that the, f the contact force would have then this F uh, friction. That will be your friction force. And then you'll have your F normal force. And your gravity your gravity will also have its FGY component and its FGX uh, component. All right, so now um, let's add up s some of the forces in the X is equal to zero. What have we got there? We've got your friction force, okay, minus your gravitational force in the x direction is equal to zero. So your um, your friction force is then equal to this x component of gravity. And what, what is that going to be? Well, we know that this is your 15 degrees, or theta. So this is going to be mg sine 15, or sine theta. Okay? But at the same time, we also know that this has to be the maximum. What must the coefficient of static friction be between your shoes? Remember, um, Fs max is equal to mu s Fn, your normal force. So we can only calculate this when we assume that he is about to start sliding. Okay? So this on the left would be ms times the normal force is equal to mg sine theta. I'm just going to put theta back in there. Okay? So there we go. We, we have some idea here of how to calculate it. But we don't know yet what fn is. So let's try to find what fn is. Some of the forces in the y is zero. So we've got f normal is equal to F gravity in the Y. But what is, what is the Y component of the force of gravity? It is mg cos theta. So Fn is mg cos theta. So if we rewrite this, we're going to have mu s times Fn, which is this, mg cos theta is equal to mg sine theta. So mu s is simply, these cancel, it's simply sine theta over cos theta, which we know is tan theta. And we've already seen this. We've seen this ar already. If you, if you want to know what the coefficient of static friction is between two surfaces, all you do is you get an object and you keep increasing this angle 
keep increasing this angle until the object begins to slip. And at that angle, we know that mu s is then equal to tan of that angle. Okay? So all you need to do is put in tan 15, and you'll get your coefficient of static friction.